Hey cleaners, Dark here. The Back for Blood DLC has already been out and it's good. It's worth coming back to the game. With that said, I have 15 things that I believe you need to know about the Ridden Hives. Ridden Hives are part of the Tunnels of Terror DLC. But despite that, even if you don't own the DLC, you can still play the game provided that one of the players in your group has the DLC. So if you do want to get the DLC, you can get the Season Pass which you can buy from the PS Store. So if you do need codes, you can check out my affiliate link down below which brings you to a store where you can buy codes for a cheaper price. Ridden Hives is not Act 5 as we thought it would be but it's actually in the middle of all of the acts. And with that said, there are six ridden hives that you can randomly go to. We have The Cut, Brood Lair, 300 Below, Blood Stream, Caustic Cesspool, and Sunken Passages. Which all of them have the Golden Skull Trophy. So if you do want to find those trophies, you can check out the link above here or you can check out the link in the description below. Ridden hives are special stages that you can enter in any stage or any act as long as it's not the final of that act. They tend to randomly spawn in certain locations so it's best to know where to find them or you can search for them on your own time just as long as you don't get overwhelmed while doing it. Now you can only enter the hive if all of the players are already inside the vicinity of that hive. That means if there is somebody trolling you and just doesn't want to go in all they need to do is to just continue and not go close to you and that's pretty much it. It will be a waste I have to say. One of the good things with the hives is that it ends the stage right away. That means if you find the hive right when you go out of the safe room, that is already the end of the stage. But sometimes you can still find the hive really close to the end of the stage. So that means you don't need to redo the stage that you just did. And you will most likely proceed to the next stage once you're done with this hive. Another good thing when doing the hive is that you get to access your cards earlier than before. That is because whenever you start a hive, you get to choose a card from your deck. Which means the more hives you enter, the more cards you can access before even doing the finale. Of course, hives is not just all good. There is going to be a con with it. And that is you can't buy team upgrades in the hive vendor. Only refills, weapons, and accessories. Just like with any stage, there's going to be corruption cards. But but what all the written hives don't show here is that there are timed hordes. So every about 4 minutes there's gonna be a horde coming in whether you like it or not. Inside the hives, if you look above, there's gonna be this sack-like thing which I still have no idea what it's being called. These are actually spawn areas for zombies or riddens during a horde attack. So the best way to handle it is to destroy it, preferably before the horde comes out. These are totems and these are the main reason why you're going inside the hidden caves. Unless you have something else that you really want to do here. Anyways, skull totems are only found here in the Ridden Caves and there is a maximum of three in each Ridden Cave. So when you do find one and try to get one, it works as a weapon as well. It does not take up your primary and your secondary slot but if you're holding it, you're unable to use your primary weapon. Since we're talking about totems, you have to be very careful if you're the one carrying it. Because if you fall off the ledge, you will not just automatically die. You will also lose the chance to pick up that totem once again. Meaning you will have one less totem for your run. When you're inside the hive, your main objective is to actually go out. And that's where the yellow rope ladder comes into play. Normally, a broken rope ladder will show you or lead you to where the true exit is. And this true exit is actually a well-lit area with a rope ladder that is intact that can be seen. So just like when you entered, all of the players needs to be in this vicinity in order for you to go out and end the stage. There is another way for you to exit this stage and that is by going into the inner hive. Inner hive entrances are special, optional and random entrances where you can go in which ends the stage and leads you to the final area of the ridden hive which is called the nursery. Since Inner Hive is a new stage, you can also get three more totems from it. Anyways, we have the introduction of warp chests in this DLC and these warp chests can only be found inside the Ridden Hives. These warp chests also spawn randomly as well as its contents but there is a chance for you to get legendary named equipments like the attachment called the Motherlode. 
and the Prototype 378, which is the legendary submachine gun. Now, opening a warp chest comes at a cost. Whenever you open a warp chest, it instantly gives you 20 trauma damage. Going back to the totems, what are they used for? Well, you can use them to buy new cards in the Skull Totem track in the supply lines. Not just cards though, but these are definitely new cards and these track offer new skins that are really, really cool to look at. So I do hope you get to enjoy these DLC and of course the Ridden Hives. With that said, if you want to see more tips and tricks and guides for Back for Blood, please do check out the video over here. And if not, you can also check out my other videos over here.